Hi everyone, this is Mischief. I want to talk to you about the season memoirs event. Right now you can create like a story, you can just type it up or you can have a picture with it or you can create a video and you just need to upload it into Discord into the channel that says season memoirs and it's based off votes so people will click on if they like yours and vote and if you win you go on to there's a stage two for excellent works and then people get to vote on that again so it's kind of like how the frame one worked where you could uh choose who had the best frames and then they would create it for the game. So for my memoir, I'm going to tell you, I'm actually on a few different servers and I have a few different accounts, but on 354, I am a leader of an alliance that is actually multiple alliances and I just want to tell that story in my memoirs. So here is the memoirs of Lee, Lee, and Lee <laughs> for server 354. The story of the alliance by the name of Lee is a long, twisted tell, about four months long. We had her ups and we had her downs. We gained great people and lost them along the way. Lee started as the underdog and we had to fight for everything we have achieved, sometimes with fire and sometimes with tough negotiations. When we first started on the server 354, we were in an alliance that went by the name of DGA, and they had three groups that were considered part of the alliance. DGA had big goals right from the start, but war was quickly declared before any cities had even unlocked on the massive group by a team with a powerful player who had invested a lot into her account. Every day, people would sign in and find out that they were in another location and the mail list of attacks was never ending. One of the members that left to form another alliance somehow worked out to have an understanding with the stronger alliance. As long as they stayed out of the war with DGA and the other alliance, they would not be attacked. I was the second member to follow and join that alliance. Other DGA members soon followed. The leader who had started the group was new to the game, however I played on a few servers and was helping teach everyone what I knew. Within a few days, the leader promoted me to leader without a discussion or a warning. <laughs> Soon after that, the first cities of the season opened up and I taught everyone what a wall team is and what teams to use, including what the factions were. Because we were a weaker team at the moment, we needed to plan out each fight to be the most effective. One of my first members to join was a lot of little fish. And although we were still figuring out who would best fit in what position, she had always done other jobs and wanted to try out being a warlord. So after I had led the level one through three cities and she had a good idea of how to run rallies, she took over and ran every single one after that. She has a take charge personality and had no issues running the rallies efficiently. The whole alliance did amazing. They followed instructions, were organized, and we were the fastest team on the server. We were told that we were not allowed to have a level 6 city, however, although we did not have many people spending money on the game, we prioritized training right from the start. I would teach what I knew from the past seasons, people would read and study and pass on the knowledge that they learned, and we tried to just push each other to improve constantly. In fact, we made one of our R4s a dedicated trainer. One of the founding members, Mr. Wicked, became the recruiter and got to work immediately, convincing people to join us. At this time, he had a minion-related name and a minion picture, and somehow convinced many members of our alliance to become minions themselves. Even non-members of our server joined in, and he may have possibly convinced me to change my name to something Gru-related and my picture to reflect that, but I won't confirm that. <laughs> Our alliance kept growing and our combat power kept increasing, enough to make some of the bigger alliances nervous. So we were included into discussions with the top teams taking the level 6 cities. One of the members of the council was another underdog named UDF. The leader of UDF was the first one to reach out to me privately and welcome me to, to the group. 
and UDF became one of our first allies, negotiated by me. When the level 6 cities unlocked, Lee was the first to capture the land. Our organization showed what we were capable of doing once again. At this time, a small alliance merged into ours, bringing us our future alliance trainer, Jamaican Pirate 45. We started getting a reputation for being quick on cities and responding to attacks on our members. If someone hit us, we would always respond in a big way so that hopefully in the future they won't hit us again. Later in season two, we learned the hard way that sometimes no response is better, but we got to love their fighting spirit. War always threatened to break out because most of us had come from the first alliance that had started a war with the bigger alliance. We were always questioned and accused of plotting something. To be fair, many of us would have loved to wage that war, but it wouldn't have been smart. During this time, I was very grateful that we are an alliance formed of many nations and have people that are on all hours of the day and night. Hero, one of the first to follow from DJ, was online at the opposite time as me and helped avoid many confrontations by responding to inquiries when I was offline. He would let them know I would respond when I got back on. He had a way of wording things that put an end to any more questions. When our first alliance duel started, I shared a training video I had made from a past server, and although we were up against a very small alliance named Love, it was essential to start training the correct way from the start. Love was prepared for us on war day. They spread out across the whole map, but we tried to stick to only our dual partner, so we spent the day hunting. One of our members seemed incredibly excited about fighting and appeared she had an eagle eye for finding the targets across the map. Although she was small then, she didn't seem afraid of any target, even bigger ones than her. Her name was something else then, but now it's Mrs. Wicked, and she became one of our R4s that helps with recruiting and diplomacy. Now she assists with recruiting and warlord duties. In the next alliance duel, we were against a team that was much stronger than us, but we still put in all our efforts. On fight day, we were neck and neck with the other alliance. Whoever won that fight day would win the duel. We went in guns a-blazing and were down in points by the time I went to sleep. However, our team kept going back throughout the night. We had people on the server messaging us telling us that they were thankful because apparently that team that we were up against was not very friendly to them. When it was down to the last few minutes, our fierce diplomat, C. Celine, don't let her fool you, she's always down for a fight no matter how nice she is, Mr. Wicked and I was left on the server. The other team was calling for their server's help and wanted to attack me, so I became the distraction. I random teleported away from Mr. Wicked and Ceciline, and while they continued to attack and get more points, I was hunted by many on the server. They were too distracted chasing someone that was 30 minutes away from them, and we ended up winning the battle in the last moments. Before Ceciline left, she put into world chat, thank you for the points. <laughs> many duels later, Sometimes we fight and sometimes we come to agreements with our dual partners, but still to this day our team would rather fight. On 354, the Strong Alliance also made it clear that only they were allowed to get Eden, and no one else would have anything other than a level 6 city. So in the group chat with the leaders, I explained how seasons go in the future and how we will eventually merge with other servers, and that it is wiser to build our server as a group not just one team. The leader in UDF was the first to message me, and he agreed with me, but he didn't want to speak in the group chat too much because the translator had mistranslated something he had said in the past, which had caused him issues. However, all the other alliances in there also seemed to agree, and through many talks we agreed to have a friendly fight over Eden week three. We all wanted a chance without tearing our server apart, and we got it. We prepared for weeks, stocking up on mutilated fluid, teaching people what to do, and when it came time to attack, our dual opponent showed up and was burning us while we were racing to kill mutilated zombies faster than the other two alliances that were competing. We would go together and our dual opponent would hit us off the mine, and then the other alliance would take the mine. We told our team to ignore them and just focus on Eden. We were the first to max out mutilated zombies, zombie kills, and donations. However, in this friendly battle, we were not allowed to garrison the city, and with everything maxed but we kept getting kicked off of gathering spots, the odds were against us. We sat there watching the other alliances catch up as they continued to kill zombies far after we were done. We kept asking the other team to just call it, but they were very stubborn. 
We had a three hour time limit and they were gonna keep going until that time was up so that our team could focus on our opponent and stop the apparent war that was about to start between us and the other team. We backed out, but with the promise that we would get Eden week one of the next season. During this time, I got many messages of encouragement from the other teams that could see what was happening. One of those teams was Russ and one of the r 4 was Sanka. That was the first time I got to talk to her and she really helped me with her encouragement in that stressful situation. Later we would merge with Russ and Sanka would become our R4. I told everyone I refused to have an academy since they were so much work and I would not make any alts. So naturally, later, made an academy for our alts. So I insisted that we kept it below 20 members so that we wouldn't have to protect them while we were fighting multiple dual partners. However, another alliance was getting hunted relentlessly by that bigger alliance and they needed a place to go. So we merged our alliance into our academy since Lee was full and Lee was formed. Citrix, the leader of the other alliance, was grateful that her people could have some protection and was excited to work with us. Hearing how little sleep and how much stress she had been going through was heartbreaking and we were the ones to give her a break. Finally. So now we were Lee and Lee. And of course I had an alt in Lee. <laughs> the first time Lee was attacked was by a team that later broke up called SP2. When we were fighting them back, they were trying hard to recruit one of our fiercest fighters, Vixen, as she was burning all their fortresses. It, however, had the opposite effect, and it seemed to drive her to push them back even more. <laughs> In season one, we had an ace up our sleeve named Trey. He was one of the members that had come with me to the new server and knew what he was doing with mines and how to path to cities when most players were getting their first experiences with them. On the other server, he is known for being one of the fastest pathers and soon our team would learn that too. Later I convinced him to be an R4 and help with the battle master duties. We were the fastest to take cities again. I made it clear to people that the cities were first come first serve and we needed to have a plan. Literally moved up through cities behind us and we started to grow our family field. Every time a member of our academy was attacked, we would help all attack them. Soon people understood that Little Lee was not a separate team, but one team with us. To help instill this, we moved my alt to be leader over there as well. Thank goodness we have a great team that helps run everything. Because the land was a free for all. Some disagreements happened, some wars happened, and some alliances fell apart. One of these was Russ versus Cam. Russ was told to attack Cam if they wanted to be allowed to have access to the inner cities by the bigger alliance on our server. Both sides put up a big fight, but Russ became our new neighbor to the east of us and Cam fell apart soon after. As some members were looking for new homes, we would defer to I read Styles' sage advice. He had started in Cam and knew many of the members and helped guide us in approaching the members. We took Eden during the first week of the season and were able to enjoy a little moment in the spotlight. It was fun rewarding our members with Eden spoil rewards and titles. We are one of those weird teams that even love the negative titles. <laughs> Soon after taking over Eden, I was having a bad day. I don't remember why, but I logged into the game and both Big Lee and Little Lee had formed a picture with blocks of a heart with mischief under it. Apparently they had removed me from the group chat to organize this and I was so busy dealing with other things in the game that I hadn't noticed. It was a great surprise. I felt honored that they cared and impressed at their organization. For week two, we helped our neighbor VIP by giving up our level six city so that they could have one too. And we gave Russ a level five city so that they would get better rewards as well. At this time, we were approached by Russ and another alliance, SIW, to form a merger before the new season. This is where we were lucky enough to join forces with some really great people like Sister Knight, Ramon Queen, and Bad Girl. We didn't have enough room to fit everyone into Big Lee and Little Lee, so we became Big Lee, Little Lee, and Tiny Lee. And I made another alt. I knew over time, because of Lee's goals and just the nature of the game, that we would become smaller over time. Later, we were approached by a team named JJJ who were also being hunted and wanted protection. So we merged with them into Tiny Lee. Gas Gas and Honey Bee were added to the leadership and they have been fantastic and brave, taking on anyone that tries to attack our family, even if they are bigger. 
Season two was a rough start. Many of our neighbors tried to test the waters by attacking the cities that our little Lee was taking, but after they found out that Big Lee responded, they worked more closely with us like neighbors. We also ensured that they got a level four city in time to get rewards. We were ready to take Eden week three. However, when the countdown reached zero, we could not attack the city. We had forgotten to drop a city. Unfortunately, on a war day, you can't drop cities. I immediately started counting our neighbor's cities. UDF, once a uh, underdog like us, now strong, and our closest ally was full of cities. To the east of us, we had another ally that was not full of cities. Unfortunately, they were being attacked heavily, so most were in bubbles or had no troops to take a city. Our academy literally was behind us, but also full on cities. Tiny Lee was not full on cities, but had our lowest level people and very few online. I jumped over to that alt and rallied everyone on. We began our attack taking the city with only seconds to spare on the reset timer. We all cheered and then Big Lee took Eden without another hitch. Season three is what we are currently in and it started fine. It was when the gates were about to open that once again, we were being threatened with war. <laughs> Our neighbors and us had many communication errors when in negotiations with cities. They even sent another alliance to attack us before the talks were even finished. We knew if we would war with them, many on their server would back them. And it would be many against us. They knew this and would mention this in talks. They seemed to be pushing for war. I knew Big Lee would have fought bravely and fiercely if it had come down to it. However, we prefer to try the diplomatic approach and be friendly with our neighbors. It makes for a much more fun season for all. So as an alliance, we were told that we would never be able to take a level six. We not only took a level six every season, but Eden for a second time. Not just that, we have had several members make it to the championship duel and one even won it. All right, that's everything for my memoir. It's the story of Lee, and I'm really proud of everybody that's in that alliance and that group with us. And it's just we grew from from humble beginnings, I guess is what they say. All right, thanks for listening. And you don't have to make a video. You guys can type up something. You can submit a picture and just go and vote and have fun with it. And thanks again. Bye. I at night, I be in my feelings, I'ma be fine, need time and I'll soon be winning I live life for the fight, yeah I'm here to get it, I got time